Christmas and welcome to the Bad Movie Be Down Christmas Special. I'm a fan of the unorthodox Christmas movie. Yes, while we may celebrate holiday specials encouraging goodwill to all men and such and such, many of the Christmas set movies I watch mostly celebrate explosions, violence and obscene language. Take movies like Cobra and the Get Carter remake, which are both set at Christmas where the only thing in Stallone's sleigh is corpses. As I've said before, it's common practice to set an action or a horror movie at Christmas as a retort to good cheer. For example, look at the original Lethal Weapon, where a festive Bugs Bunny cartoon is juxtaposed with Riggs contemplating whether to blow his head off, or, most infamously, the first two Die Hard movies. Many people, including myself, would rank them as their favourite Christmas movies. Ironically, both of them were originally released in July. So I'm going to do a movie that isn't bringing good cheer to anyone, festive or otherwise. Enter While She Was Out, starring Kim Basinger. Probably the most notable thing about the film is that Guillermo del Toro is listed as an executive producer. Yes, that one. Now before you ask how his name could have got attached to such a shoddy movie, bear in mind that an executive producer has very little say on the final product. In fact, let's see how many executive producers there are. Okay, there's Guillermo, there's one. There's another, that's two. Oh look, there's basing herself. Three. Up to five now. Blimey, we're up to eight. That's another three, meaning there were up to 11 executive producers. Yeah, I'm getting the impression that Guillermo didn't have much to do with this movie. And that's not even counting another two more co-executive producers. How many executive producers do you need for an 80 minute film where a woman gets chased in a forest? So our story begins on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I know that. And for every nine stocks that fell, eight advanced. We stop acting like it's Black Creek and Friday. All right, well, then why don't you go back with that, uh, that, what's his name, that uh, asshole talked into going along on Enron. Uh, you know what? Fuck you two. I'm getting the very subtle impression he might be a douchebag. This is Kenneth, played by Craig Sheffer, who is the husband of Della, played by Kim Basinger. How do you want to tell me what it is you do all day long? Hmm? Look at the goddamn place, okay? What in the hell happened Stop. to you? Stop. You don't even try to put yourself together anymore. I don't know what you want me to say. I, I, we've got kids. You know what? I don't want you to say anything. I want you to keep the house clean. You understand what I'm saying to you? Don't break my heart. Don't tell me what to do! Hmm, this seems suspiciously like an allegory for Alec Baldwin. By the way, kids, could you try to act a little concerned? It's okay. It's okay. What are you doing? I want a Nintendo Wii for Christmas, Mom. Can I get an American Girl doll? Guys, guys. These kids have just seen their father abuse their mother and they're playing with toys and asking for more? Shouldn't they be a little bit upset? Not, Mom, can I have a Nintendo Wii for Christmas? She then heads out for the mall. The movie then tries to be foreboding with animal carcasses and traffic accidents as she drives to her destination. Hi, Della. Hey, what's up, Cassie? I'm over at the mall. Um, I'm headed over there myself. Do yourself a favor. Turn around. It's held over here. Hey, my cell's dying. You know, I... I damn. Oh, I, and I, I left the charger in the other car. The widespread adoption of mobile phones must be one of the worst things to ever happen to horror movies, since now every movie now has to include a bullshit explanation for why they can't use their phone, like losing their battery or their signal. It's become a laughable cliché. She arrives at the mall. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Lady, it's Christmas Eve. Don't act so surprised that it's packed. Whilst trying to find a space, Della encounters a car that is double parked to her frustration. After finding a space some distance away, she returns the double parked car and leaves an angry note. Doesn't this seem a little out of character for an abused housewife? I doubt she'd be confident to insult anyone, even through a note. So what happens at the mall, you ask? Foreshadowing! Yes, lots and lots of foreshadowing, none of it particularly interesting. She goes to a lingerie section to show off her sexual repression, for instance. Oh, and she gets a coffee, where the woman has the audacity to spell her name wrong. How dare she get her name wrong? It's not like it's one of the busiest shopping days of the year and she has tens of customers to attend to. Oh no, it's a sign that Della gets no respect. Della? Is that you? Lynn. Lynn Monroe. 
I haven't seen you since college. You left to marry that handsome jock and we never heard from you again. Mm. Just like this character will never be heard from again after this scene. Oh, and the obvious metaphor in this scene is that the woman is how Della should be. Strong, confident and successful. The filmmakers do love their allegory and symbolism, don't they? But believe me, allegory does not make up for the fact that this sequence is obvious padding to extend the thin story to feature length. You know how people say that they love an actor so much they would even watch them read the phone book? Well, no one says that wanting them to see them read the phone book because it would be mind-numbingly boring, and so is watching Kim Basinger stroll around a mall. There's also a scene of her credit card being declined due to a lack of funds. You'd think this might be leading to something. It never does. As the mall closes, she returns to her car, noticing along the way that the double parked car is not only still there, but her note is gone. The same car then pulls up behind her, preventing her from getting out. I've got a gun. How's about I aim it at your pussy first? <laughs> Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Not only is that not how people in gangs talk, but it's also coming out of Lucas Haar's mouth. You know, the kid from Witness. Someone whose physical presence and voice are completely unthreatening. This is Chucky, who apparently named himself and his soldiers. Look at them. What are they? The Benetton Gang? There's one white guy, one black guy, one Hispanic dude, and one Asian guy. That's the most culturally diverse gang I've ever seen. How the hell did they even know it was Della? Granted she stopped at the car on her way back, but her note had no indication of her name or car. What, are they psychic? Maul security arrives and tries to get the gang to leave, when Chucky pulls out a gun and starts intimidating him with it. Of course, Chucky is a complete moron and accidentally shoots him in the head. Apparently, just because it's closing time at the mall, all other customers have disappeared and no one heard this. Della wisely decides to hightail it out of there immediately. We don't go down for this shit! Crazy nigga, don't worry about it. It's all good, it's all good. Don't fucking call me nigga, Chucky. You ain't earned the right. That goes for all y'all niggas. You know what makes a gang seem threatening? Childishly bickering amongst themselves. So now we can get a car chase, and despite the fact that Della has a good 30 seconds head start on them, they somehow manage to pursue her. By the way, where the hell is she driving to? Surely the logical places to go would either be her house, which is in a neighbourhood surrounded by a wall and an electronic gate, or a populated area. I don't recall her house being completely in the middle of nowhere. Della even wastes time stopping at a petrol station that doesn't even look like anyone has been in it for years, let alone right now. Just keep driving, woman! She ends up at a housing development and crashes her car. The gang follow her example. Am I supposed to be afraid of these dumbasses? Rather than taking a sensible option like, say, running away, Della decides some brilliant idea to waste more time trying to jumpstart her car even though the gang are right behind her. There's a time and a place to do this and it isn't now! Eventually, Della realises that this isn't feasible and hides again, watching the gang from a distance instead of, you know, running for the hills. Chucky breaks into a truck. <laughs> I think I'll find you now, cunt! It's like a kid pretending to be tough by swearing a lot. It's pathetic. Man, we caught up in this bitch's life like it's a soap opera. We need to just bail, blast out of town, act like we was never even around. She's the only witness! <sighs> Come on, if we hit the road right now, we could be miles away before they find dude. We could be sipping cold beer swimming in the Atlantic just like you promised me. Hey, look! One of the dumbasses just points out the plot holes of the damn movie. Why are they spending so much time chasing this woman when they could straight up bail? She's probably so terrified she wouldn't even report it. Remember how I broke you out of that hole, dude? Yeah, You trust me, right? All we gotta do is find this bitch and we're out of here, I promise. Okay? That's it. Oh, that's a good answer, isn't it? Just trust me, the whole plot is built on an implausible contrivance. They find her car with her belongings and then her, because she was stupid and did not give herself a huge head start when she had the opportunity. Check each one of these houses. Split up. Right out! so quickly they clearly went to the house 
Did they teleport? Oh, and the shadowy figure is actually a Santa figurine jump scare. Why is there a Santa there? It's a construction site. After several moments of cat and mouse, they eventually corner Della under the floors of the house. They spend several moments trying to intimidate her. Why are we doing this? Chucky has a gun! He could just shoot her and the movie would be over! For some inexplicable reason, Chucky thinks Della might be carrying something in the toolbox she has been carrying from when she tried to jumpstart her car. He asks her to open it up. Again, why is he doing this? Oh, right, because the plot says so! Obviously, Della uses a spanner as a weapon and makes an impossibly contrived escape. The gang tries to go after her. Go down here! Look out, Huey! Oh. Ah. Huey! Oh. Oh. Ah, fuck! Oh, of course, the black guy dies first. How? He fell three feet! How the fuck did that kill him? And why is the Asian guy gagging? He didn't react like that when they shot the mall cop twice in the head earlier. Della makes her way into the forest, still carrying her toolbox. Check out how much sound it makes. That is the quietest toolbox I've ever heard. In real life, that would give away your position almost instantly. It's blatantly obvious that she's carrying an empty toolbox for the running scenes. Della! 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 Stella! As she runs through the forest, she sees four trees with crosses on them. Uh, symbolism? Tribute. Sorry, Sorry, Huey. Do the filmmakers have any clue how gangs in real life act? This scene is completely laughable. If they meant it to be moving, they failed miserably. Afterwards, they go back to hunting down Della. Wait, it's Bulgari. What's Bulgari? It's perfume, dude. No, but it smells more like that number five shit. Nah. It's Bulgari. My dad's speech bait's in it. Why do they care what perfume she's wearing? They're in a fucking gang! Yes, the gang that had been previously incredibly idiotic have now become expert trackers, following her by looking at the forest. Because character consistency comes second to the plot. They spot her again and an awkwardly staged tussle in shoes. The Hispanic member goes after her. Huey? Is that you, Huey? I saw him there in those trees, he was right there. I'm sure you did that. Okay, why is the Asian guy so distraught? If they were close, it helps to establish these things. The Hispanic gang member catches up to Della, who takes a four-way tire iron out of her toolbox and beats him up with it, eventually lodging it into his face. <laughs> We're all gonna die here. Ain't no gun can kill Spirit gone bad. She's gone bad. She's gone bad. She's gone bad, man! Game over! Game over! Game over! Meanwhile, Della goes and takes a piss in a stream. Because it was vitally important that we needed to see that. After her tinkle, yet more repetitive chasing ensues. And yes, the Asian member splits up and goes after her alone. Why do they always insist on splitting up? Have they not heard of strength in numbers? Of course, Della attacks the Asian guy, ramming a screwdriver through the back of his head. Chucky gets all emotional. Um, you know, she has led to the death of three old gang members tonight. Maybe now might be a good time to just turn around. I'm just saying, you know, might be wise. You're not going to obey me, are you? But no, he pursues further. He's even smiling. Here's a note to Lucas Haas. If you lost three of your gang members in one night, I don't think you'd be smiling. Just you and me left now. I can smell your sweat. I can smell your blood. I can smell your guts. I myself cannot. And they are really cute. Twins, huh? A woman's purse can tell her whole life story. You sure you don't want a cigarette now, huh? 
Now that I know where they live, maybe I'll stop by and say hi. No! No! Not my kids! Not the ones living in a safe, fenced-off suburban neighborhood with their father! You stay away from them, you monster! You took him from me, Della. He was like my little brother. All he ever wanted to do was see the ocean. But he never got to see it. <laughs> that poor gangbanger! He never got to see the ocean! <laughs> Face it, Della. You're no suburban housewife. I reckon I know what you've been dreaming about, though, Della. What you've been aching for for all these lonely years. The wind in your hair. The dirt of life between your fingers. Oh, God, don't tell me they're heading down this route. Oh, yes, they are. As Della starts putting her sexual frustrations on Chucky. Because there's nothing sexier than the kid from Witness trying to hunt you down in a forest, is there? In fact, they even start having rough, dangerous sex at gunpoint right in the middle of the forest. It's shamelessly exploitative and completely out of touch with the rest of the film. I find it hard to believe the characters would do this even to get to each other. And Della is indeed simply trying to get closer to Chucky as she pulls out an obviously fake CGI flare and blinds him with it before shooting him in the chest. At least the other kills were inventive. This is a boring anti-climax. Lame. So she goes back to her car, where she manages to jumpstart. The car burns out upon reaching the front gate, forcing her to walk back to her house in the rain. When she gets there, she puts the star on top of the tree. Symbolism! She comes back to find the kids tucked up in bed. What did you get me at the mall? Nothing. Wow! She just gave her kids the greatest Christmas present of them all. A because that's a great message to send out to abused housewives, isn't it? Kill your spouse! In fact, that's what the whole movie is about. Murder as empowerment. Merry fucking Christmas! Oh, and this movie has tiny fonted slow credits that pad an extra five minutes on the incredibly short 77 minute running time so that it goes past 80 minutes. This movie is a lump of coal. It's terribly scripted with a huge number of plot holes and contrivances. The characters are badly written and often act inconsistently from scene to scene. This isn't helped by the performances, particularly that of a spectacularly miscast Lucas Haas, who makes himself look like a fool trying to act tough. It's like a lifetime TV movie meets an exploitation flick. Encouraging murder has female empowerment, which is borderline reprehensible. It's also full of padding and stalling to make the incredibly thin story reach feature length, with many dull stretches, particularly early on. You know what this reminded me of? British horror flick Eden Lake, which is a lot more brutal, a lot more relentless, and a lot more suspenseful. Go see that, not this turkey. Because this movie had a shitty message, I'm gonna make up for it. Not only is Christmas a time of great sharing, but also of great caring. It's about family and spending time with the ones you love. So remember, have fun, take care, and have a Merry Christmas! Their idea of Christmas, I gotta be here for New Year's.